My name is Michael Billingsley, and here's my story. I call it the other side of the eight. From the first grade through the fifth grade, I lived in Pacific Beach and attended Bayview Terrace Elementary School. I walked and talked like the white kids, played like they did, but being such a minority, someone was always willing to remind me I wasn't one of them. It's a shame, but young children like myself were introduced to racism at such young ages, most times before we even knew what it was. Now, elementary school lessons are pretty bland and generic. A few pages on the Revolutionary War, George Washington, Abe Lincoln. But every time the subject of slavery would come up, a class of 40 white kids would turn in their seats and stare at me as though I was a nine-year-old authority on the subject. <laughs> All I could do was stare back or look down until they got tired. But for those few seconds, I felt like nothing, less than everyone else in the room. And as those seconds that lingered like hours continued to tick away, I knew someone would piss me off after the recess bell rang with a not at all ignorant racial comment about my heritage. Was your mom a slave? Do you ever pick cotton? Now finally, some little freckle-faced brat would get up enough nerve to put his hand in my hair so he could feel how kinky it was. And this really made me feel like a dog. But that was my last straw. The fight was on. My only release was to punch, pummel, kick, and bite the one who had dared touch my head. So in the winter of 1972, my dad retired out of the Navy and bought his first house in Skyline, Woolway Court, right off of Brookhaven Road up here in Southeast San Diego. But besides my family and church, I really didn't know anything about black people. The house in Skyline was run over with weeds, ivy, and tall grass. My dad worked us in that yard every day of Christmas vacation until school started. <laughs> and I'll never forget that first day. My mother was rushing around that morning getting my younger brother and I ready for school when she began telling us how to act with that Alabama accent she never lost. That I'm going here after the fool. You're going to get your lesson, you understand? No playing or clowning around in class. And besides, if you act up, these niggas will kick your ass. I was like, come on, mama. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so I will be attending Daniel Boone Elementary School. The first day of school is always an emotional one in one form or another. For parents, the uncertainty of leaving their child in someone else's care or the elation of being free the majority of the day again. For the children, these emotions were elevated to the highest forms of happiness, sadness, anxiety, and fear, sometimes all rolled up into one compounded by the fact that in a new school whose demographic difference made it more of a culture shock than anything else. So with my mother's warning fresh in my ear, I approached my class with fear and caution, and mama still by my side. But I'm 10 years old, though, and I wouldn't allow her to hold my hand. All I could think of was who would be my friend, what games would we play at recess, and would my teacher be nice? This also being my mother's main concern. So before my arrival in class, my mother shared a few quiet words with my teacher, and when she found out, it was her first day also. Mrs. Nance, my teacher, was a white woman from North Carolina in her mid-50s, tall, overweight, and she wore those cat-eye glasses that had played out at least 10 years earlier. <laughs> now, the kids in this class who didn't ignore me all gave me their most menacing looks they had. I was immediately uncomfortable. I decided right then and there to keep my mouth shut and be invisible and let whatever happens, happens. But like I said, I'm 10 years old. So after an hour or so, I raised my hand and asked permission to go to the bathroom. Mrs. Nance with her southern drawl said, y'all know where it is? Yes, I do, I replied. Just then, giggles and laughter slowly rumbled through class. He talks like a white boy, someone yelled. And everyone laughed until Mrs. Nance made him be quiet. I made my way to the restroom, embarrassed and feeling ashamed for even opening my mouth. After extending my bathroom break for as long as possible, I left and made my way back to class. And once back in class, I found out we were getting a nice distraction that afternoon. We were to be visited by two police officers from the San Diego Police Department. Now at my last school, we had just done that about a month earlier. Now at Bayview Terrace in Pacific Beach, this was always a happy occasion. A couple of officers would show up after the teachers would fill the children with anticipation and excitement stories of heroism, protection, and safety. For a child in a white neighborhood, policemen were superheroes. When they came to class there, they were introduced as Officer Bill and Officer Tom. 
They had a very informative talk on what it is that police officers do for the community, how they love to serve and protect, and how we can always count on them in a time of crisis or trouble. And while each officer was speaking, the room was completely quiet. They had our undivided attention, and they could have told us kids cows could fly, and we'd have believed them. After they both spoke, the teacher asked, are there any questions for Officer Bill and Officer Tom? Every hand in the class immediately went up. Little feet were dangling under the desk as their bodies twitched and grunts of ooh, ooh, ooh rose from the room as the All-America California military brats and surfer kids fought for the attention to be first called by the officers. All but me. One thing I had learned from the first through fifth grade was to look white of those had who didn't want to be bothered with me. Then the question started. Officer, can you help me get my bicycle license? Of course. Just ask any officer or go to your local fire station. Officer Bill, can I see your badge? Sure, kid. Come on up. What's the proper way to cross the street? Do you get to drive fast? I think there's a bad guy by my house. On and on, the cute little questions poured from the mouths and minds of those everyday all-American 10-year-olds at Bayview Terrace School in Pacific Beach. But now, I was in Skyline. Boone Elementary. But me, I figured this would be nice to listen to the officers for a second time in as many months. At least I wouldn't be doing math or spelling or anything boring like that. So after a lonely lunch break in which no one would talk or eat with me, compounded by the fact that my brother had a totally different lunch hour, I eagerly returned to class just in hopes of getting this day over with. And within minutes of returning to class, two large white police officers entered the classroom looking eager to speak with all the young impressionable children. After a short introduction from Mrs. Nance, Officer Bill and Officer Tom stood front and center in front of the class, and before either one could get one word out, someone from the class shouted, why'd you guys beat up my brother? Someone else yelled, y'all shot my cousin. Why y'all always messing with us? By this time, my head was spinning. Before I knew it, there were no more questions. Ten-year-old kids were standing up saying things like, I hate cops. Who do you think you are? Y'all ain't shit. Go to hell, pigs. I mean, fast, quick, and such rapid succession, you might have thought it was rehearsed. I'm like, you know what? My mother could curse with the best, but these kids were on a whole different level. I didn't know 10 and 11-year-olds could say so many fuck yous, motherfuckers, and sons of bitches. Finally, I look at Officer Bill and Tom, whose complexions were beet red now, with a collective flow of steam pulsing from under their collars. Never mind that neither officer had said a single word during the whole tirade. Bill seriously seemed to be contemplating pulling out his service weapon and pop, pop, popping a few holes in the ceiling. And Tom, he had this look like, I can't wait to get you little niggas on the street. The kids in that class, well, finally, they looked at each other and decided to leave. The kids in that class yelled at those cops long after they left the classroom. Then they began slapping fire, pumping fits like they had won the Super Bowl. They had really stuck it to the man. This seemed to be a vague, great victory in such young lives. Now, as for me, I didn't think my eyes had ever been open so wide without blinking for so long. For years, though, I would be reminded that we had run the police out of that class, but not out of that hood. For the next few months, life in Skyline became pretty good for me, except for two major hurdles. First, Mrs. Nance, he might have thought we would be a match made in heaven. I arrived at Boone School with a 12th grade reading level and every afternoon, she would put us in a reading circle where she took pleasure in shaming the other children who struggled with three- and four-letter words. When it was my time to read, I would cut off her attempts to help me because I didn't need it. This really seemed to piss her off to the point where she had me set up to be paddled by the principal. Secondly, there was the matter of officers Bill and Tom, who made it a point to drive through that neighborhood as we were walking home from school. Once they spotted anyone from that fifth-grade class, we were immediately stopped, searched, slammed against squad cars, and always asked for ID, which obviously we're 10, 12 years old. None of us had that. This will go on for the next two years until I was bused to a school back on the north side of the eight. Thank you for listening.